What are your process vital signs? A process scorecard shows the vital signs for that process. Typically, one to two ratios per key performance area. What are your process vital signs? There are a lot of different measures that can be referenced to give you an idea of how well your body is operating. But which measures are the best indicators of body process effectiveness? Which measures can you look at and right away tell if your things are going well or not? Every process has vital signs, even if we have yet to define what they are. What are the vital signs for the processes you are responsible for? From a personal health perspective, your vital signs are respiration rate, blood pressure, temperature, and pulse rate. More recently, pain level has been added as a fifth vital sign. If you have made a visit to the doctor lately, even if only for a checkup, it is likely that your vital signs were taken and recorded, just as they had been collected on prior visits. Believe it or not, vital signs were not captured on a consistent basis until the early 1960s. Now in healthcare, it may seem as if there's too many measures in use. From a patient perspective, however, it's important to note that the vital signs mentioned above remain as initial diagnostic indicators of a patient's relative health. In the above example are two additional examples of what a set of vital signs might look like for a dental office or a food plant. I've learned that key indicators of organizational and team health can be developed, just as they have been defined for the human body. Note that all of the measures are rates. Using rates help you see the relationships between system performance factors. It's key to note that all but one of the above examples is stated in form of ratios. Keep in mind that any process count can be converted into a time-based, cost-based, or percentage of total-based ratio. Time and money are spent with each process cycle. This enables the creation of time and cost-based ratios, such as cost per transaction, time required per transaction. Classifying counts by type enable the creation of a percent of total ratio, and in turn, Pareto charts to help identify high leverage improvement areas as your measures are used to further improve process performance. Finding Key Process Errors and Defects what are the root causes of your process waste? Combine the prevailing mindsets of 1. Simply showing up to work and doing what we are supposed to do with 2. Providing what we think the customer wants without really defining their expectations and you have a great recipe for waste. Add in the fact that most people truly don't like to or don't know how to define and measure process performance effectively and you end up with daily work systems that contain a lot of rework, excess production and inventories, non-value-added steps, and unnecessary people and material movement. All of these types of waste result in customer dissatisfaction. We end up wasting a lot of time and money waiting for approvals or others to give us stuff to do. We try to fill up this dead time with busy work that really amounts to nothing more than the creation of non-value-added goods and services that have to be processed. Unfortunately, we rarely have sensitive enough measurement systems in place to know, one, how often errors and defects truly occur, and two, what the real costs of those errors and defects are. We often don't know how much waste many of our processes contain. We waste time and money each day on a repeated basis and simply rationalize this waste as the cost of doing business or something we can't avoid. We accept a wide variety of errors and failures as simply being the way things are in our line of work. People are going to forget things, get hurt, miss work or complain, no matter what changes we make. Equipment is going to break down and get damaged. Things are going to be thrown away. While waste is a byproduct of any type of system, the degree of waste that we are resigned to accept as normal is what we should be questioning. The designs of your existing systems are producing the waste you see each day, but no one says these designs can't be changed. 
A small percentage of organizations have proven that you can redesign each of your key work systems to contain and produce a lot less waste. In turn, you get much better performance results. This is what pursuing process excellence is all about. What do the processes you own cost? All processes have costs associated with them. Typically, these costs can be grouped into the different cost pools shown below. The percentage breakdown of costs, however, vary from process to process. Process owners should use this worksheet to help identify high leverage cost pools and possible waste streams that exist within them. So first of all, you'd begin by looking at what are your primary process cost pools and the annual cost of each. So for example, when food is manufactured, you have direct labor, indirect labor, raw material, fixed overhead, The total cost is made up of those five cost pools, and they can be broken down into the percentages shown. Now, this type of breakdown into five buckets can be done for any type of work process. Identifying cost pools helps you know where to focus your process improvement efforts. Begin by defining the cost pool that represents the largest percentage of the total. Second, calculate the daily cost for each cost pool and estimate the waste percentage associated with each cost pool unless you have actual data. Finally, use the estimate to project the estimated daily cost of each key waste stream. This information can be summarized into a table such as shown where we estimate the daily cost of weight. On the left hand side, you'll see the five different cost pools. You'll see the waste percentage and daily cost in the center columns and those two numbers are used to create the estimated daily waste cost shown in the right-hand column. As you can see for this process, over $4,000 are wasted per day. If we look at the transactions that are processed during that same period of time, the waste cost per transaction can be developed. This is the number we are trying to consistently drive down over time. Exercise number three. What key processes do you own? What repetitive tasks do you spend time on each day? How much time do you spend in each key process area? What key measures could you use to gauge your personal process effectiveness? For this exercise, we have two different worksheets in the workbook. The first one is on page 40, and it's called What Key Processes Do You Own? Every process owner regardless of their level in the organization, should complete a worksheet similar to this one if they want to model process improvement excellence to others. We have to know and understand the processes we own to know where we need to make improvements. This worksheet will help you identify where you spend your time, the key processes you spend time on, and how you might measure the effectiveness of those processes over time. Now, the reason we have a time focus up here on the front is that no one is going to be able to go out and get extra time. And so the only way we find time for process improvement is by finding existing non-value added time that we're spending in big buckets, ideally, and minimize or eliminate that time. So, that so we start by what, looking at what our key processes are, what our time buckets are, how much time we put in each bucket, how much of that time is waste, and then how much improvement time we might have to work with if we can get rid of that waste. Select a process from the above list, ideally the one you invest the most time in and or own, and complete the table shown below on page 40 with that process in mind. Completing this table will help you set up a performance summary spreadsheet or a database for trending process performance over time. And we'll get into that in the next chapter of this book. And so we're working on metrics in the bottom half of page 40. Once you've done that, we will move then down to the process definition blueprint exercise that is shown in the workbook on page 49. The objective of this exercise is to, to define the key processes that exist in your personal workplace, 
the key requirements that customers have of those processes, and the measures that can be used to evaluate process effectiveness. Some key questions you can ask in the team exercise are what examples of key work processes that you think of? What are the customer requirements of these processes? How do we measure the degree to which these requirements are being met? And the best things to focus on here are the repetitive things we do in our daily job. The outcome is to create a process definition blueprint similar to the one shown at the bottom of page 49. Ideally, the teams share their work, we look at best practices, we look at areas where each group can further improve, and we move forward from there. Happy process definition exercise.